สวัสดีค่ะ And good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, the 20th of October, 2021, and this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing by the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration (CSSA). Let me start right away with an update on the number of vaccines that have been administered since the start of our vaccination drive in February of this year. Yesterday, we administered almost 1 million doses of the vaccine. Um, that is 994,781 doses, to be exact. This increases the accumulated number of vaccinations to over 67.5 million doses. The number of people in all provinces who received their second dose is also rising, especially with respect to vulnerable groups such as people aged 60 and over. In Bangkok, more than 70% of the population have already received two doses of the vaccine, and other provinces are also vigorously continuing to inoculate their population. Let me turn now to the general situation, and we have a slide for you today, as usual. The new confirmed cases we have recorded are totaling in the number of 8,918 cases. This is the lowest number of cases in our daily report that we have seen in the past months. It brings us to a total of new confirmed cases of 1,782,989 cases. The active cases amount to 103,507 cases, of which 2,728 are in critical condition and 619 are on ventilators. Our prayers go out to those who are in these serious condition and to their families. The new recoveries, the number is 10,878, which brings our total number of recoveries to 1,662,433. As far as new fatalities are concerned, that number is 79. And it continues to be a number that is less than 100, so this is also a bit of good news that we are sharing with you today. Some observations that we'd also like to share and this will also appear on the slide that you have in front of you, is that Bangkok still has the highest number of cases, with 1,020 cases reported today. Um, this is followed by Yala, Patani, Songkla, and Simut Prakan. Also, clusters continue to be found in construction camps, workers' campsites, factories, markets, and many of you may have seen in the news, social gatherings at eateries, office spaces, prisons, crowded communities, fishing boats, and schools. This serves as a reminder for us that we should not let down our guard. And it was a point that was actually underlined today in the CCSA operational meeting in that all agencies in all provinces must continue to implement disease control measures and monitor social gatherings and social gathering activities in order to encourage the people and businesses to comply with universal prevention. Let me now turn to some information that we'd like to share with you regarding preparations for the country's reopening. We are now at a very important juncture where there will be adjustments in the coming days and weeks to entry requirements for both Thais and foreigners alike. This is a positive development because it means we are preparing for the country to reopen. Please do bear with us as we know there are many frustrations and concerns and we are all very eager to welcome back our friends and family. We will be transitioning from the existing guidelines into the new guidelines as smoothly and seamlessly as we can possibly ensure. For the country's reopening on the 1st of November to fully vaccinated tourists without quarantine, there are many key factors that are being considered by the officials in terms of our readiness. There are three main ones. 
that were outlined just now in the Thai briefing, and these include on the health side, the situation of COVID-19 in terms of the capacity of the public health system to control the pandemic and treat patients, as well as the vaccination rate in the provinces set for reopening. The second set of factors are the local economic situation, especially as it concerns the tourism sector and related businesses. And the third factor that we are looking at right now is how all of our measures will cohere with the reopening plans and travel regulations in other countries. In specific terms, provinces can only reopen when COVID-19 infections are under control, the public health system is prepared, and at least 70% of residents have been vaccinated. Local authorities and business operators must also be ready to comply with public health procedures and measures. On the flip side, the concerned agencies are also considering the guidelines for accepting international visitors and travelers, and we will disseminate this information as soon as possible. For now, allow me to recap the existing channels for entry and how these channels will transition into the reopening of the country. First, and as you all are aware, Thai and foreign nationals who have not been fully vaccinated may enter Thailand, but will have to undergo alternative quarantine. Second, and as you know, Thai and foreign nationals may enter Thailand via the Sandbox Scheme, which currently includes four provinces and will be expanded to 17 provinces on the 1st of November. These two channels are already being implemented. The third channel, which is new and effectively launches Thailand's reopening, is for fully vaccinated travelers from a list of countries to enter Thailand with no quarantine. Relevant agencies are currently considering this list very carefully, and the CCSA will keep you updated on this manner, matter. Excuse me. For our listeners in the Bangkok area, allow me then to give you an example of preparations that are underway for the country's reopening. This morning, the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration presented guidelines for the reopening of Bangkok under four main concepts, and they are protect, prevent, promote, and contain or control. So under protect, this simply means that we are going ahead to administer vaccines to everyone in the province. We're talking about early diagnosis, treatment, isolation for confirmed cases, and preparedness of health services. Under the topic of prevent, this refers to sentinel surveillance, practicing universal prevention, regular ATK testing, bubble and seal measures for factories, the creation of COVID-free settings and COVID-free areas. In terms of promote, this means educating people on smart living and life during and with COVID-19. Contain and control refers to efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 by locking down specific areas with high rates of local transmission. It also means building people's immunity with vaccination and developing the quarantine system. Other provinces besides Bangkok are also implementing similar measures to boost confidence in living with COVID-19. Let me turn now to a good news story with a slide that will come up on the screen shortly, and that is that yesterday, the ambassador-designate of Hungary to Thailand handed over 400,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine to the Minister of Public Health to administer to the people in Thailand, regardless of nationality. The CCSA wishes to thank Hungary and the people of Hungary, as well as all other countries that have assisted Thailand in our vaccination drive thus far. Before our briefing ends, I would like to take some time to respond to some of the questions we have received through our Facebook channel regarding the new Thailand Pass system and the current Certificate of Entry or COE system. Um, and that is that first, the CSSA would like to 
inform and underline that you may still register for COEs before the new Thailand Pass system becomes operational on the 1st of November. So again, the COE is still in existence. We are still accepting the applications right up until the 1st of November when we transition to the Thailand Pass. Secondly, all COEs that have already been issued will remain valid after 1st of November. So please do not worry about the COEs becoming invalid early next month. This, I hope, will help in the planning and the arrangements you are making for travel to Thailand. For now, we are seeing a downward trend in both the number of infections and the number of fatalities. Some businesses are reopening and we are now headed towards the reopening of the country. Nevertheless, the CSSA, CCSA excuse me, would like to highlight once again the importance of universal prevention and for everyone to continue to follow public health regulations for your own safety and the safety of those around you. That's all I have for today. I wish everyone a very safe and a restful, wonderful, long holiday. Kapun ka, sawadee